Mrs. Bonneville. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy I know New it's a bit Year. late. Yeah. <laughs> Where Happy are New we? Year. Uh, we're in Chowbella um, on a ooh, a not very nice Sunday afternoon. So we're having a, a nice chilling day, aren't we? Time of filming this, folks. It's the 15th of January. We're all over the place. Sorry we've been a bit late with stuff and oh, responses, but Christmas, New Year and all that yeah. lovely stuff. Can I just start by saying a thank you? You can. Let me plunge the coffee. Oh, right. You'll be, you'll be plunging. So thank you so much to our lovely friends over the pond. Uh, you know you are. You know you are. Uh, firstly, happy 50 plus one anniversary. You'll know what that means. Hope there was some ABBA playing at the, uh, the country <laughs> place where you had your, uh, your anniversary. And I do hope, we hope, that you're feeling a lot better yeah. uh, after your illness in October, November. And thirdly, thank you so much for the parcel that arrived. It arrived a little bit late. We got it last week because we've got a, a Royal Mail strike here. So everything's striking at the moment. So the, the mail is one of those things. But Kenneth currently oh, is sat holding his little cow. And it's a bit wet because he's been chewing it. But it's just beautiful. The chocolates, I can't show you because we ate those straight away. Uh, but thank you so much. It was very much appreciated that. Really, really is. Brilliant. I hope you're okay. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, just, uh, we don't tend to name folk because we don't want to embarrass because we should really ask permission. But as Mrs B said, massive thank you. It was it, a lovely it surprise. genuinely touched us, didn't it? Yeah. It really did. Yeah, so really thank is. you. And also for putting pen to paper and good old fashioned letters. There's nothing, in our opinion, there's nothing better than reading the letter so thank you right let's uh, crack on this yeah. is our <laughs> monthly podcast that we usually tend to do at the end of the month but as I say it's the 15th of the month but we're all over the place and um, for those that haven't joined us before on our little channel um, we take questions um, from you lovely folk that you send into our email which is Darren Evans 5 at gmail.com I'll put it down below now and we don't duck anything. And the one rule is 99.9% .9 of the time, Mrs. B does not like to know what the questions are. No idea. I sometimes edit certain things just in terms of language, but I literally cut and paste them from the inbox onto the iPad and read them out. So are you ready? <gasps> Let's just have a little mm -hmm. slurp of our coffee. Cheers, there's nothing in it, it's just coffee. <sighs> Speak for yourself, Mrs. B. Right, Ian and Debbie Hughes from Tamworth. Oh, not far away. Not far away at all. Um, we continue to watch your lovely little channel um, each Sunday, and also, <coughs> excuse me, I've recently subscribed to Kenneth's channel. Thank Ooh, you. Oh, thank you. Um, you may not rem excuse me. You may not remember a while ago, and we wanted to start this by saying thank you. But a while ago, our our son in bracket Stephen is now no longer spending hour after hour. Um, on the internet and social media. Can you remember Miss, Mr. B, we asked you to give him some tough love? I can actually. Oh, I remember that. I can actually oh, remember gosh, saying, yeah. get out of your back Ooh, bedroom yeah. and, yeah. Um, tough love is required sometimes, isn't it, question mark? He has now discovered the great outdoors. And, get, and guess what, Mr. and Mrs. B, stuff you already know, it's already free. We just wanted to let you know that Stephen is now, <coughs> excuse me, Stephen is now an avid walker um, we have spent several hundred pounds in various go outdoor shops. Nice. Um, but he is now no longer spending hour after hour uh, on social media and the internet. Do you know what? I can remember. I can. Um, well done. Yeah. Uh, it's not really a question from Ian and Debbie. Just wanted to let us know but, uh, that yeah, Stephen is now doing some walking. We often say, don't we, it's free. It's free. And we do it all the time. Now, we've often said as well, because we're the wrong age of 50. Um, and wrong side of 50. Wrong side of 50. And if we didn't enjoy the odd drink and good food, <laughs> then we would probably be a lot thinner than we I'd, are. I'd be six stone. Yeah. And I'd probably be the same. <coughs> but, uh, but we always say that we stay sort of like even because we walk don't we, we yeah we think... stay as we are because yeah. we walk a lot i mean if we didn't eat i say we like our food and we like a drink every now and again so but what's wrong with that but yeah. we maintain our weight <laughs> as it currently is because we walk so listen um fabulous news, ian and though. debbie yeah that mm. is great news and i can remember Stephen. yeah kind of shouting at you saying get off that internet um well done you fella and you're in a um, nice area to have some nice walks there yeah you are Tamworth. you are we used to drive through there on the way to the Cotswolds yeah. didn't we that yeah. sort of area so you've got some nice walks so thank you very much i really appreciate we appreciate the update there very so much yeah i don't want to sound patronizing but, but keeping up steve good lad yeah um mark proctor from ipswich and mark wants to know um this is a very short question mr mr and mrs b we love your channel 
Thank you. But we just wanted to know, had you looked into all of the legislation and paperwork, and he's put in brackets, utter headache, we tried it, of taking Kenneth a break, <gasps> away on holiday. <laughs> Do you know oh. what? This, oh. seriously, um, Mark, this is really good timing. Go on, I'll let you update Mrs B. <laughs> so, so Mr B, because he works, so I tend to sort sort out things at home. And he said, just sort out what we need for Kenneth for next year. Because, of course, this year we'd booked a lovely little um, farmhouse with a pool and that in France, which we're really looking forward to. I had a word with my vet. We take Kenneth once a month to the vet and he has his worming tablet and they weigh him and they just make a fuss of him so he's, he feels quite calm. Anyway, so I said to my vet, what do we need? And she said, well, I could tell you now what you need to go, but that may change. You need to go on the DEFRA website. So I did. Oh my goodness, it's a minefield, an absolute minefield. Obviously, you don't have the pet passport now. You have the uh, animal health check, uh, which only certain vets will do, and it only lasts for a certain length of time. And then if you go over that time, you've got to have one done in France, and you can only take so much food. You can't take this food. Oh, and it went, the list went on and on and on. And we just said, I said to Darren, I'm just not going to enjoy this holiday because I'm going to be so frantic, worrying that we haven't got the right paperwork to come back, and they're going to seize Kenneth. I couldn't bear that. So we've decided we've cancelled our, our, our trip to France and we're now going to... Uh, Devon. Devon, uh, in, a, in a signal box. <laughs> Watch this space. Watch well, this can space. I just, can, just for those critics amongst the small audience that we have, it's a, sig a converted signal box. So I, we It's have... got some land around it and <laughs> stuff for him and, a, and, a, and yeah. a river flowing down at the bottom. So it's just really, really nice. But yeah, unfortunately, we would love to have gone to France, but the bureaucracy bureaucracy paperwork and paperwork and red tape it's just completely prevented yeah. us from doing it so they need to get the finger out and stop doing that because it's ridiculous absolutely let's not make it political um but yeah mrs b's right it's it's for i spent was looking up to spend a couple of years working for the rspca uh, over here in the uk and i've remained very close friends with the chief inspector officer um dermot i know you watch um and Dermot also advised um, very recently um, in terms of some of the issues and things to watch out for um, in terms of taking your dog. It's not just France, so I'm not we're not knocking France, it's just... um, but it's just some of the legislation, obviously, since we've come out of the EU. But anyway, we've decided against it. Yes. Um, so thank you for so the nudge, Mark. Um, yeah. Well, not the nudge, but thank you for the kind of your question as well. Yeah. We agree. It's but a shame, isn't it? It's a shame. It is. There we go. There we go. It Devon is. will get our business yeah. instead. So Judith and Peter from Portsmouth. We absolutely love you too. Um, we think you're absolutely crazy. You always make us laugh. Um, we just wanted to say thank you for a great 2022. Um, oh, Mrs. B. Sorry. I'm <laughs> she's terrible. <laughs> she chairs are four legs for reasons, folks, don't they? She shouts at me, something rotten. Um, Judith and Peter want to know, Mrs. B, what are your New Year's resolutions? <gasps> Mr. B, do you have any? My New Year's... My New Year's resolution. Are you sure there's nothing in there's there? There's nothing in there. Is not to have any New Year's resolutions. I haven't got any. Yeah, nor me. I d I've never had. Don't. Uh, it's not that I don't believe in them, but um, I understand the tradition and, and and all the pomp and ceremony that goes with with you know setting goals and all that. But do you know what? Have another great year um, with the wife. <laughs> now have another lovely year with Mrs. B. Thank and you. a lovely year um, with, with Kenneth, our dog. That's kind of the only thing I wish for, to be honest with you. Just a healthy year. Yes, yeah. Right. Thank you, Judith and Peter, though. Thank you. You didn't let us know what yours were, mm. by the way. Um, ba, 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 we could ba, say ba. lose weight or stop drinking and stuff, but it never, never gonna last. Happen. It's never That's, last. No, no. Why it's like someone said to me recently, what's plan B? I've never in my entire life have had a plan B. No. I view those folk don't right in it's just my view but if you've got a plan b you don't believe in plan a so don't have all that stuff look, don't believe in it and luckily i go with the flu yes which she is does what she's told you're right <laughs> she's from yorkshire right moving on um chris Kenilworth from lancashire oh lancashire yeah. um mr and mrs b we absolutely love your channel <laughs> thank um, you i feel a little bit I can't, I can't, greatest respect, Chris. I think you've put here embarrassed, um, but when I read your email, I, I don't know whether you'd spell checked it to be honest with you, Chris, sorry. Um, feel a little bit embarrassed saying what everybody else says, but we really do love you too. Oh, thank um, you. You really do cheer us up. Uh, Excellent. Our pleasure. Thank you very Excellent. much. Excellent. I'm glad we do. Um, 
we'd absolutely love to know we know you've talked about it briefly but now you're probably three months or halfway through the winter um, any regrets on the stove conversion <gasps> um, <laughs> no can I just say can I just say we've had some pretty cold nights and apparently next week we're having snow um, it's mid-January so it's not unheard of this stove we've we've had to on some occasions open the doors when it's been freezing outside because and I mean freezing we had some friends around uh, on the 27th of January uh, December and um, and we're all sat there, oh, God, so. and we had to open the doors and we had a few windows open it really does work honestly I mean we our opinion the stove the multi-fuel stove is the best thing ever to It's the best boat. money we've spent since yeah, we've been on the we boat. Love it. Other than buying the boat, mm. um, you know, we've had a few things done, as you know, but just over a grand. Oh, it's, it's the best thing we've ever oh, done. It's fabulous. Um, I kid you not, um, Chris, recently, and it's not just a one off, recently um, we were both sat there and say it's, it's not been warm at all. We've both been sat there with no socks on. Yeah. I'm sprawled out on the sofa. Mrs. B sat in yeah. her easy chair here. Um, and it is without doubt the best thing we've ever it's done. Um, there are no um, blankets. We don't sit wrapped up in a blanket or anything like that. We it wear t-shirts. Yeah, this is what we wear yeah. all day long on the boat. Yeah. It's it really is hot. Beautiful. <laughs> in um, fact, the other night I said to you, it's just a bit too hot. Yeah. It's a bit too hot, and it was it was just. In fact, all the water had frozen. We couldn't get the water out of the taps at one point. Outside. Um, outside, um, and it was that cold. And I was saying, can we just? Can we just open a door? Yeah, it's, it's just, lovely. And it's not of my age because I've yeah, gone yeah. past that. And it's also, it's 24 hours. We don't, it, the stove's not really been off since we lit it in and but, what, early October. Yeah. Chris has also asked rough costs per day. Um, everyone's got a budget. I think it's absolute peanuts. We're probably spending, and I have done a, 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 a this is going to come across as a, it's a throwaway figure. I have done some calculations. Per day, around about £5, which... I really personally don't think that is expensive. And that's 24 hours. This boat is warm 24 hours. Yeah, and it's a big space to And warm it is up. a big space, as yeah. you can see. And honest to God, so Lovely. if anyone is, anyone got any doubts about a squirrel multi fuel stove to heat a thick, big wide beam, just don't doubt it. It's beautiful. Lovely. Best just, thing we've just done. Just one tip. If you keep the bottom uh, door open a little bit too long, then it does get really, really hot. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, it does. But hey, look, the end of the day. I'd rather be too hot and too Great. cold. And I'm very nesh. Yeah. I'm very, I'm cold in any. Thank you, uh, thing. Chris. Thank you that for that. Um, Faye Shaw from the Wirral. The Wirral, lovely. And Faye has put, um, love the channel. Um, I only came across it very recently. My hubby said you need to watch these two Mad Hatters. <laughs> Um, Thanks, Louise. And they've got a lovely, cute little dog. Thank you, Faye. Um, and Faye's put, Mrs. B, I would absolutely love to know, as a new member of your channel, and and without um, any prior no knowledge of wide beams, I have watched your boat tour. How did you get on with the Christmas dinner? Ah. Can I, before Mrs. B, can I just say, magnificent. Best Christmas lunch I've seriously ever had. Thank you very much indeed. Um, now what we tend to do is we tend to go out with some friends for a few hours. Well, we tend to go out for an hour and it turns out to be two and a half hours to the local pub here that's just in walking distance. But I'm very fortunate to have just a normal sized cooker on the boat. And what I tend to do is at the top, um, at the t so I've got an oven and then I've got a pull down grill. And the grill, when I take out the, the tray and the, um, the, the, what do they call it? Uh, that goes inside the grill um, rack. I put that into the oven and that works as another shelf. So I've now got three shelves in my oven and I invested, invested, it was about pound sixty in the tinfoil trays, you know, the oblong tinfoil trays. And I got everything prepped. I put the, uh, the turkey in at a very low heat. I got everything all ready and everything fitted in and it was perfect. Yeah, it was, it, seriously, I mean, Mrs. B's, I, I don't want to embarrass her, but she's a good cook anyway. Um, and it really was, a, it, it's, as you say, Faye, you've, you've seen the boat tour. Where we're sat, the kitchen is behind you. Um, and it's a full size, full yeah. size kitchen, full size oven. And we had everything, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah. So it really, really was. And I, I keep saying jokingly, Mrs. B won't beat that next year. And I'm not saying that to egg her on, but I think it that's was reverse wonderful. Psychology. No, it's not, honestly. It really was good. And I had, I had a few drinks as well. 
it's just a normal day there, Faye. No, I'm joking. So, Faye, thank you. It was lovely, Faye, thank you. And, fa <coughs> excuse me, thank you for the lovely comments about the channel. Mm. Right, well, Bruce. I'm on board. Br yes, not literally, but yeah. And um, Bruce and Jackie Hughes. I'm going to have a rant, Mr. B. <gasps> Oh no, Mr B has enough on his And Mr own. B, I think you might have a rant with me. I'd like to know your views, and there are a couple of questions here, apologies, if, even if you just want to ask, sorry, read one of them out and answer one of them. I'm going to read them all out, Bruce, because you've had a rant. Um, freestanding bath. Um, my God, how long does it take to fill, up, fill it up? And is the hot water, end, is, the hot, is the water that comes out of it at the end hot? Um, what do you have on question mark? Would you consider a second bedroom if you could walk or if you could walk down each side of the bed? Question mark. We ask because there is a boat for sale currently at Mercia now with the same layout. Yes, we know the boat. Yeah. We know the boat that's on brokerage. Um, we've got a friend, haven't we? That uh, we've got friends who have got a, a freestanding bath and it is beautiful. But she always says I can never have it hot. It's always it's always lukewarm she has, yeah. a lu she has a lovely bath but it's lukewarm we've got yeah that joe and gary if you're watching and harry what, and harry what a lovely lovely family and um, they've got an amazing boat yeah it's, it's beautiful. beautiful the bathroom the boat itself but the bathroom yeah and they've got a Gosh. beautiful freestanding boat i think bruce you've probably know you know my view um if i was hell bent on a bath it would have to be freestanding mm -hmm. and full size like our friend joe and gary's um because why have a bath if it's not going to be full size um we don't know we've not got a bath i have heard sometimes <laughs> that water isn't the hottest um you know once you finally filled your bath but i'm not i've never been a lover of a bath anyway mrs b loves them i don't like baths but that's just my view can i just say that when i go to sheffield on a thursday should i want a bath my sister has a freestanding bath yeah. so i can have it as hot as i want yeah. and as bubbly as i want so. um so would i have one not really it would be on the list as i say freestanding but it wouldn't be high on the list would we consider a second bedroom no um because for us correct me if i'm wrong which is b the family are close enough to come and go mm. but if they did want to stay they could book a lodge or book something so mm. i'm never we're never going to buy a boat with a second bedroom because of that because we don't need it because the family would only be over once twice a year if that so yeah. no I think personally, I think they're a waste of space. That's just our view. But but people do yeah, have yeah, them, I, have I, them for a yeah, reason. I'm not apologising for my view. Yeah. It's just my view. Um, if we did have one, per your comment, Bruce, yes, walking down each side of it in a yeah. heartbeat. We know yeah. the boat you're talking about. There's a boat currently on brokerage here, a new and used boats at Mercer Marina. It's got two bedrooms. Yeah. Um, in fact, the main bedroom at the front of the boat, I would actually have as the second bedroom and the second bedroom I'd have as the main it's bedroom. It's very nice, it's beautiful. It's a lovely layout, you it's can walk lovely. down. Mm. One of the things personally, I say I'm not knocking it, it's just my view, one of the things I don't like about the second bedroom in most boats is the pushed up against the wall. I'm not interested in that. Um, it's a nightmare to kind of make yeah. um, and beds up against the wall on boats, never a good idea to be honest because of condensation. But the one on brokerage here is a lovely boat mm. in terms of how that second bedroom's laid out. So hopefully boat builders going forward will start to consider that. Um, mm. The only exception for me, selfishly, is if the boat, for a second bedroom, the boat would have to be seven, 70 foot long. Um, then I would possibly look at one. But as we've said many times, we've got our ideal boat. And I know it's so unique to other people. Mm. So I'm not criticising anyone that's got second bedrooms, baths or anything like that. It's just our, my view. Yeah. We anything like, to add, Mrs. No, B? we like all this space, don't we? We do. We love uh, this space. We've said a thousand times. Mm. that We entertained 27th of December. There were six of us on board. Yeah. and the <laughs> Plenty of room. Just plenty of room. Plenty of room. Yeah, yeah it's lovely. It's really nice. So, Caroline and Hugh from Portugal. <gasps> oh, Obrigado. Um, yes. Um, welcome um, to a wonderful channel. We found you very recently you. and we've started to binge watch you. Um, <gasps> nice. Sorry. Um, Caroline's put, um, just a very, very quick and basic question. Apologies if you've, if, if you've answered this before, but we are going through your back catalogue. We would like to know, is it expensive to keep the boat warm? Oh, what well, we've just been saying about just that. Just talked about with the it. Coal. Um, no. no. Absolutely. But again, it's caveat city on the internet, isn't mm. it? Because I don't want to offend anyone. 
everyone's on a budget and as I say I've worked out roughly it's about five pounds a day it's about three we buy 10 kilogram bags of coal now, I know you can buy the 20 25 kilograms I only buy those because they're easier to handle mm. and I can store them on the back of the boat easily um, and those bags of coal are around about seven pound UK and we use about three quarters of a bag a day so five quid a day um, but as I say that thing's burning 24 hours a day and the temperature is lovely, lovely. Um, so no I don't think that's expensive no. if you're on land <laughs> that is a fraction you couldn't you couldn't heat your house for five pound a day on land no. you'd have to have a tiny little house tiny yeah. Um, so I don't think that's expensive. No, we we were. Can I just quickly yeah. say we were watching uh, foxes the other night and uh, foxes afloat, and they were going through uh, a comparison of what it would cost to be on the cut on your boat uh, a few years ago as as to what it would be now, and it was really really good the comparison. And it's not cheap to to live on a boat, but heating a boat with coal like we do is really really. Um, Econo economical isn't it really economical uh, so depending on what heating you've got if you if you're using your uh, central heating all the time you're going to be using a lot of diesel with that aren't you so that would would add up but for us personally we're using coal we don't have the central heating on the central heating is on a thermostat isn't it if we want yeah, to we've, use it we've had the, so we've got with basto central heating um Mrs. B's right. We I ran it about three months ago just to give it a full cycle to make sure it was working. I'm going to probably run it again in the next couple of weeks just to keep it kind of you know ticking over. Um, but also we did touch on it personally. The Webasta we've got a very powerful central heating system mm. on this boat. Not down to us because say the previous owners specced the hell out of this boat, um, and it doesn't keep. The central heat, in our opinion, doesn't keep this boat anywhere near as warm as that stove. No, it's lovely, the Just central heating, but it's, it's not, lovely. It's not the same heat, is no, it? No, not at all. So, no, I don't think it's expensive. We don't think five quid a day is expensive. No, no, not at all. Um, but as I say, I appreciate everyone's on a budget yeah. and, you know, cost of living crisis, etc., etc. But that's kind of where we are. Um, but thank you for your question thank and you. welcome to the channel, Caroline welcome, and Hugh. Yes. Andrew and Kath from Lincoln. We've been watching you for a while now, avid watchers, Excellent. and I'm trying to convince, <coughs> excuse me, I'm trying to convince Andrew, this is Kath, um, to do what you two did a few years ago, sell, sell the house and go buy a wide beam. We keep looking and we've absolutely landed on Aqualine um, as a non-negotiable. You know our views on the fit and finish there. What we would like to know is your views on flooring. Would you prefer carpet or wood flooring throughout your boat? Um, I like the water floor. It's, uh, it's just easy to keep clean, um, and especially with with Kenneth, we've got Kenneth and stuff. Um, and I don't know whether did I did I put it on one of the the videos or something that we've got. I've got some uh, <laughs> I've got some duster slippers. This I got I can't remember where I got them from, but you, they're like dusters that you put on your feet. And I put a bit of Dolly Parton on uh, Alexa, and I can swish around the floor, and it just buffs it up. So it's a lot easier to keep clean, isn't it? Yeah, I agree. Um wood flooring i say you've probably seen if you've done the boat tour we've got a lot of rugs down primarily because it does warm it up a little mm. bit wood flooring is quite cold yeah um but yeah i personally we think it looks really really nice but it's nice to be broken up we think with a few rugs as well yeah. Also, it's nice for Kenneth to yeah. lie on the rugs. And we've got a carpet in the bedroom. Yeah. The oh, yeah, carpeted. and the carpet, I wouldn't have anything other than carpet yeah. in the bedroom. Yeah. Um, That's lovely underfoot. So, yeah. Yeah, wood. Yeah, a bit of both. A bit of both. Yeah, there you both, go. Actually. Yeah, we 50, can sit 50. on the fence. Sit on the fence no, I don't sit on the fence. No, he never sit on the fence. Not for anything. <laughs> nothing. Andrew and Kath, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, apologies if I've pronounced this right. Petra and Luca Vinicoli. Apologies, um, from southern Italy. Oh, I bet you're not worrying about your heating bills at the moment down there, will they? Oh, I don't know. It can be. Depends where you are. Depends where you are. But yeah, yeah, it's Mrs. A bit B. Warmer than us. Oh yeah, Mrs. B's right. A lot warmer mm, than us. Beautiful. Um, and they've put. Um, we really like your channel. In brackets, apologies for our English. Not, not a problem. Please don't um, apologise. We watch. Sorry, sorry, Mrs. B. We watch every week, and we absolutely love your boat. We love your lifestyle. And your dog is wonderful. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have one question, if we may, because we have started to dream about your dream of living on a boat in the UK one day. Oh. Would you go for a boat 
without a well deck question mark no no I can get rid of uh, Mr B it's his it's his like little man cave you know when you, you usually ma a man will have a shed in the garden or something like that in summertime and springtime uh, he just disappears out there with his fishing rod and his, his little tin of corn <laughs> and as, as long as I make him some sandwiches and a cup of tea every now and again he's quite happy and I can shut the door and he's gone so so yeah I like a well dick that's why <laughs> Petra and Luca um same as Mrs B but for different reasons I I honestly well first things first would we buy another boat we don't know um, if we were to buy another boat I am 99.99% .99 sure it, it would have to have a well deck yeah. again I'm not criticising I just don't like the look of the front of them without a well deck um, and yeah I love you know the one thing we've learned quite quickly is space is just a blessing on a boat and that extra little bit of room or space you know I've got two chairs in there I can sit comfortably I can fish um, I can go sit and chill out and read or sleep it's a, just a really nice space and as I say aesthetically I just think it fin mm. finishes visually it finishes the boat off rather well I don't like the look of the front um, w without a well deck so yeah we um, we wouldn't be without a well deck no it's nice it's nice having that there yeah cool Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and I, I hope you're having a lovely time down in southern Italy. Yeah, I, I mean, it's I snowing. Used to live there. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I don't. Um, Keith Roberts from Summer on the Wirral. Oh. Keith, that's very secretive. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> um, absolutely love you two. Watch you since you had your motorbike channel. You are an absolute pair of raging lunatics as far as I'm concerned. Thank but you. keep up the great work. You are you epitomise the phrase we just press play and see what happens. Yeah. We do. Yeah. We have no script. There's no filters, there's, there's, <laughs> we don't airbrush this anything. Is it. You can tell. <laughs> there's nothing airbrush or anything. Keith Keith has put and this is we've had two very apt questions this time. Come on, Darren, you're a senior professional. That's your duster. <laughs> Thanks, Keith. Um, you can do better than that, surely. Any any review on the car seriously would be very worthwhile. Um, but are you planning to keep it long term? <laughs> Do you want to share? Uh, yeah, yeah, we are. Funnily enough, uh, we've got a lovely neighbour uh, who's got a uh, right next door. Who's yeah. got a lovely Mercedes. <laughs> and um, not that we covet it or. or I or, do. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful show. car. It is very nice. Now, when we're picking any sort of transport now that we pick, the first thing we think about is where will Kenneth be in this car? So it's got to have. A big area at the back in order for him to be comfortable because he travels so well and we want yeah. it to be really nice it's got to have a huge boot or a huge back seat practically boot yeah so we've um and, and he's right I, you know joking apart mr b is is all fun and silly and everything but it commands a very good job and um and so he can be even more professional <laughs> driving a mercedes kind of <laughs> so that's what we're looking for aren't we yeah I, I i'm a bit upset keith if i'm honest with you i'm only joking first things first and um, You've heard us bang on about four. This is our second Dacia Duster. Uh, we love them. Yeah, um, they're great. Uh, we love them because, again, look, I, I, what's the phrase on YouTube? Flexing. We're certainly not flexing because it was only 24 grand. It's not an expensive car. It's practical. Yes, they are hugely utilitarian, but it's a practical, comfortable. I happen to think the engine is second to none there's a viral youtube video at the moment dacia duster versus a ninety thousand pound land rover go watch it uh, ours is the permanent four-wheel drive and i love it and i know keith it's tongue-in-cheek and i know dacia duster it's a budget brand um but as i say i would not hesitate to recommend one to no, anyone they're lovely to Seriously, drive easy to park all day long comfortable yeah. and that high um, i love being high, yeah isn't it? um in terms of yes um I'd recently been offered um, some incentives at work, long, they're called LTIs, long-term incentives, which has allowed me to um, basically chuck an awful lot more money into the pension pot. Now, that's going to involve us getting rid of the duster um, because I use basically an allowance each month to pay for it, company car allowance. I'm going to put that money into um, a long-term incentive um, with my pension plan uh, and the company are chucking stupid amounts of money at it to top it up and why would you not do that so it's just given us a great opportunity and mrs b's right i've always wanted a 
I've always genuinely wanted a Mercedes and that's what we're looking at. Um, so hopefully that's a very apt time to question Keith. Um, but as I say, for anyone else watching, honestly, I would never, and I know Mrs. B the same, would never not recommend a Dacia Duster. They're fabulous. I just think they're, they're brilliant utilitarian yeah. do-anything cars. So, but yeah, I, I see your point, Keith. And <laughs> <laughs> there are a few folk at work that do occasionally, you know, when you walk into the car park at night and, you know, they kind of look and go, Oh, I can see what they're thinking, but I'm not into all that keeping up with the Joneses. Um, we're only looking at, you know, this particular Mercedes because it's what we want to do. Mm. Not because, I mean, there is a bit of tongue in cheek stuff, but not because of what people at work are saying. Um, but it has been mentioned. Come on, Darren, you can do better than a duster. But I always say to folk, you go and spend £24,000 of your own money on one. Um, and then let's just see what you end up with. But anyway, that's yes, getting yes. So that's stuff. really funny into that. So yeah. so watch this space. Watch It'll have a space. huge boot it will. for our Kenneth. So, um, but thank you, Keith. Um, Keith probably drives a three wheeler, Robin Reliant. Yeah, <laughs> I'm joking. A bit like uh, only fools and horses. Yeah. Um, Stephen Ruth Cook uh, from aboard our Collingwood on the K and A. Ah, oh, the K and A. Um, Stephen Ruth have put, we are now in the market for our second wide beam, absolutely love boat life, absolutely loving on the love living on the water, but we would love to know, Darren and Wendy, what do you think are the main, um, or the one main advantage is of having that one bedroom? Oh, I think it's obvious. Look. Just space. Yeah. It's lovely having this space. And you know what? If 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 somebody does want to sleep over, we've got a sofa, you know, yeah. so if that happens. It doesn't happen because like Mr. B said, our family lives close enough to come for days without, we haven't come visiting, especially yeah. in spring and summertime for, for day trips and stuff. Um, and if we entertain on the boat with our other friends that are on the marina, then they've got their own boat to go back to and stuff. So, uh, so for us, having this space means everything, absolutely everything. So that's the advantage, space. Having more space to live in rather than having space to sleep in. Yeah. So Absolutely right. Space, Mrs B's right. We've got mm. a lovely, we've got a super king size bed, as you know. Our bedroom is lovely, but you only sleep in your bedroom and you only, you know, go and have a wash, shower, whatever in the bathroom. This is what we bought the boat for. Yeah. It's lovely. So for us, space, that's the, the one main advantage. Um, Good luck though with um, the boat purchase. Love to know yeah. um, what you end up with. Um, Thank you for that. Down on the Kennington. Oh game. yeah. Oh, I Lucky loved it. We had a right good trip down there, didn't we? Was we it did. last year? No, year before. Year before, yeah, down in Bath. Um, even Keith Rutherford from the Dordogne. <gasps> Whatever. Oh, lovely. We've had Portugal, southern know, Italy, and the Dordogne. I know. We're in a puddle in Derbyshire. That's expecting snow. Yeah, that's. Ex oh, don't go there. Um, uh, even Keith Rutherford from the Dordogne, um, love you too. Please keep the great videos coming. Um, I know at the moment they're not that frequent with the Christmas and New Year period, no doubt. Absolutely. They're a little um, bit behind, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. Um, look, we've always said, we've always said, we, we've never asked for money, we never will, and we do this as a hobby. Um, so, yeah. Which we really enjoy doing. We do, we do. Um, so, even Keith have put, um, where are you with your plans for France, and have you priced moving the boat to France, Darren? Uh, Mrs B why have you called me Dan and Wendy Mrs B <laughs> I'm only joking um, have we priced moving the boat to France no um, I've been down various wormholes if that's the right phrase on the internet um, I, about three months ago I decided to investigate a few things in terms of the Canal de Midi and I started with and I believe the right exercise or point in time around is the boat um, and, and I got to it very quickly. The boat, in terms of its current specification, um, isn't the right boat to go to the south of France with all France. Um, that's not saying it's imposs impossible to do it, but we would probably, if we do decide to do that, we'd probably have to sell this boat and buy a boat in France mm. um, with, with the specification for the Canal du Midi and the various waterways in France. So I'm very comfortable in terms of what that requirement would look like um, what we're not comfortable with is what the cost would be um, to go and do that about how long is a piece of string in terms of going and buying another boat um, and then it's left us with not a dilemma because I say this is a good few years away I'm mm. 54 55 years um, and everyone knows my view on retirement I'm not ready not ready at all um, so 
it's kind of left us with a dilemma of you know how long do we keep this boat do we change this boat do we buy a new boat da, 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 all that stuff so that's kind of where we are i think that's fair to say isn't it yeah yeah for, um, the, for the time being we're, yeah. we're just we're here we absolutely we're love what here. we're what we're on yeah and you never know um mr mr b like like we said earlier uh, i go with the flow because mr b will suddenly go as you all know he'll go i'm thinking about and you know it's already a done deal so look oh like. yeah uh, that's a, uh, absolutely mrs b's right once i start to get into the you know everyone knows our view and and, and our reasons for being at mercia um you know longer term um who knows mrs b's absolutely right but right now we love love life here we both love living on chow bella we love this boat mm. we absolutely love it um so at the moment life is really really good um, but who knows in six months 12 months mrs b is absolutely right we'll have a mercedes by then and i'll get itchy feet with something else <laughs> it will <laughs> thank it will. you <laughs> this is a good one anonymous from mercy marina oh you know i love uh, the intrigue Ooh. um and anonymous from mercy marina has just literally put what about another little kenneth question mark Ooh. now oh, come. well but yes surprise, and no. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. We have talked about it. Mm. Um, but it, it and, and the danger is I don't want to raise Mrs. B's hopes because the minute you tend to say something to Mrs. B, she locks on. She's like me. That's it. It's happening. We would love one, we think, but we don't know. It's a good 12, 18, mm. possibly two, two years away. Yeah. Um, let's get Kenneth a little bit more grown yeah, up and see. We've said that because yeah, he's yeah, still yeah. a puppy. He he he's still a puppy till he's two. And yeah. and actually, we probably spoiled him. We'll probably be a puppy till he's about three or four. <laughs> never going to be. And <laughs> never going to not be a puppy. Uh, the only thing he's dreaming. The only thing that I think would definitely. I think I'm speaking for both of us. Mrs. B will chip, chip in if not. Um, I think what would really drive us to get another little Kenneth if we ever really felt he was lonely. And I don't He's ever got me twenty four seven. Yeah. He's got me twenty four seven. Never on his own. No, never. Um but never. we have talked about it. Yeah. We have talked about it a lot. Yeah. Um so watch this space because I, I think we will in the future. Um but yeah, he's um he's he's not lonely, he's got uh he's either with me, with yeah. me and Mr B or it's some yeah. he, he usually has an hour with his Uncle Paul while while I go shopping and he enjoys that. Yeah. Uncle Paul he has a, him. He has a lovely life. He has a very nice he, he life. He genuinely has a lovely life. So I can't imagine the little fella being bored or, or lonely. So, But who knows? Who knows? Watch your space. I'd have about three. Moving on. Um, so thank you, Anonymous. I would love to thank know. Thank you. Do you know, whoever it is, Anonymous from yeah, Mercy, come you. and tap me on the shoulder Ooh. and say, I'm Anonymous from oh, Mercy. I'd yeah. love to know who it is. Um, Peter Connolly. We've got three to go with Peter. Peter Connolly from Tattenhall Marina. Oh, Oh, it's nice there. We went there, didn't we? A few we weeks did. Ago, months ago. And Pete's put. Um, nice to see you at Tatton all a few months back. Um, nice little vlog. Really enjoyed it. I um, hope you enjoyed your trip to Tatton all. We did. Um, have one very quick question, if I may. Uh, what plans do you have for the channel this year? Oh. Um. Same old. Press play. Yeah, see yeah, what comes yeah, out. Yeah. Yeah. Look, at the end of the day, we. <laughs> the the num the the views on the channel have taken a right nosedive and that's fine that's because probably a lot of folk have said to themselves there's no more stuff on boats and we've been very gentle and subtle about that you know we just do a weekly vlog wherever we can mm. um in terms of what we're getting up to it's usually involving a little walk and clips of kenneth and some stuff we're you know currently debating in our life um but broader plans for the channel nothing no. I mean, we do things on we we do more things about the boat come spring summertime when you're doing stuff to the because you've still got to finish the the stuff outside, haven't you? Stuff like that. But we called Love Life Triumph. I mean, we did have a Triumph motorbike, but we do just love life, and it's just it's just a little piece of our life that we vlog about, and that's what we'll just continue I, I, to do. We have said it many many times, and, and and again, please don't take this the wrong way. Everyone that's watching this, we only do this because it's a hobby mrs b loves the editing we love just taking you along for yeah. 10 15 minutes of our week um and it really does allow us you know in future years to sit back maybe one day one week one month one year and just watch them all back oh. 
Um, when we're old, yeah, in and an that's adultage. genuinely why we're doing it, and that's why we don't put too much effort, you know. And that's probably why some of the, I say that the, the followers or the views have gone down. Great of respect. We're not doing it for anything other than. It's saying we don't put too much effort in. Well, no, I didn't mean it like that. The editor here, Mrs. Bonneville, does put a lot of effort, and you know what I Editing mean. Editing and producing. Yeah. yeah. So no plans. We're just gonna just gonna do the same as. as yeah. We're not making any New Year's resolutions. We're not doing anything different as far as blog goes. Same old, same, same old. old. Same old. <laughs> right. Sue and Adrian Rod. <coughs> excuse me, Rogers from Cornwall. Do you mind asking two questions? What? Uh, sorry. What do you think is a fair price for a new wide beam? We have a budget. Um, and we priced up your boat recently. We saw it on the internet when it was for sale. Your boat priced up brand new now would be over two hundred and fifty thousand pounds. Is that correct? We hope that's not too personal of a question. Oh, well, um, it, it makes us sound like we're really posh. We didn't. We didn't pay we, anywhere so near that for us. As it, as you all me. know, as you all know, we uh, we've got a lovely little folder in the drawer from um, Aquiline Boats. And when we were going through the boat purchase, it's full. It, it's a it's a handover folder. When the owners of this had it kind of specced and built, there's loads of photographs in there. And it, anyway, the, towards the back end of the boat, the uh, the brochure, there's a bill of sale. And as we've said, it was for two hundred fifty thousand pound four it. years ago. Um, we didn't pay that for no, it. No, we didn't. Um, nowhere near nowhere that. Near that. Nowhere near that. Um, so yes, you know that's what they paid for it four years ago I would dread to think um, what it would cost spec'd up I don't know is the question um, to have the same sort of yeah, spec built now I mean ours isn't worth that now no god no we're near, it's, no, we're near. No. Um, I, I, and I don't know what the budget is for a you know new uh, wide beam you know on brokerage here they're around about 200 mm. 220,000 yeah. pound um, that nice one that we were talking about with the two bedrooms yeah, that's that, about two hundred and twenty. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. a Collingwood. Um, yeah. The Aqualine, again, you know our views. That they seem to be a little bit more expensive. Mm. Um, but I, I genuinely don't know what what the right budget is for for a new wide beam. You know, you certainly know my views on buying new um, in terms of you know cost versus negotiation. Don't get, equal. Don't get me on that. No. Um, if you don't ask, you don't know. Mm. Um, so I, I I really don't know. Um, the one thing. I, you know, I keep my eye on the boats on brokerage here, just out of curiosity and a little bit of nosiness, if I'm honest with you. And the one thing that we've noticed since we've been on a boat, this is our second boat, as you know, so three years in, the boat prices are starting to gently creep up. Mm. Um, now, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, You're not losing money. Years and years ago, they used to buy a boat, it's like buying a car, it deteriorates as soon as you get in it. Um, yeah. Well, na nowadays it seems it seems to be going certainly with narrow boats. Yeah, and narrow it boats seems definitely. to be going the other way with wide beams mm. as well. And um, I do believe, and and it's like you know, you don't talk money. It, it's it's vulgar and rude, but we I absolutely know we will make money on this boat. Mm. Um, I absolutely know that in terms of what we negotiate, in terms of what we paid for for it, which sometimes when I lie awake at night I think my it, god how do we get away with that deal she, it did, it did have a, she did have a few little she, issues she had, she had a few, had a few but not, not many <laughs> not many um, but anyway so I don't know um, what the budget is for a new wide beam it's like anything you know you cut your cloth according don't yeah, you yeah um, and just, just just look around and you can see but, but they're around about two two and a half thousand aren't they or two thousand two hundred I don't know two thousand two hundred they're not two thousand two hundred and twenty thousand they're not two thousand two hundred <laughs> in my world let's go by are. twenty right now yeah in 1930 <laughs> maybe no but I say you, you cut your cloth according um, mm. final question from Brian and Beverly Griffiths from the Gower. We were only Ooh, talking about the Gower. We were. weren't too far away from you recently. We were in Barmouth, weren't we? Yeah. Um, on the beach a few Another ago. 20, 30 miles. We'd have been on the tip of the Gower. And, and oh, he just loves oh, it. Oh, my oh. God. If you've not been to the Gower, and Mrs. B's yet, to, and I promise this year you will see the Gower or the beaches. Mm. In my opinion, there is no better beach beaches on the planet. And I've travelled the planet than the Gower. Oh, you live where God made. Next next week's oh. vlog is uh, actually at Barmouth. Is at Barmouth, yes. So, which is not far away. And Brian and Bev have put, for goodness sake, Mr. B, um, when are you going to retire and where to? You are worrying us 
we listened to your vlog recently about living on the back of the boat and it scared us to death what are you going to do <laughs> It's actually at time of filming, it's the 15th, 15th of, of January. January. And in two days' time, Mr. B will be 55. 55. I know so I look 40. January the 17th is 55. Um, as I've said before, um, everyone seems to be hell bent on getting me retired. Um, <laughs> I don't want to. I genuinely don't want to retire. And again, you know, maybe, maybe I should have a resolution to stop apologising for my view. So I'm not going to apologise for my view anymore because it is just my view. I'm hoping folk that listen to this are grown up enough to know it's just my view. You don't have to agree with it, but respect it because I respect yours even if I don't agree with it. That's how I live my life. So I would and will not retire on this marina. It would bore me senseless. That's just me. Um, so when am I going to retire and where to? When? 10 years. I, I, as I've mentioned before, I've worked jolly hard. I've had two lives and this corporate life, I've worked jolly hard to get to where I've got to. And where I've got to is pretty much the boss. And I'm gonna enjoy the next 10 years being the boss and putting a shed load more money into a pension pot. And then retiring and then, without wanting to sound horrible, having a nice life. Um, and I'm not saying retiring on the marina here wouldn't give you a nice life. I'm being selfish and talking about me. I'm just letting you know, um, Brian and Bev, it would drive me to the funny farm very quickly. Not for me. So where is then the question, isn't it? I have no idea. Um, I would, when the pendulum's over here, new boat, um, Stratford on Avon Marina. Wow, but that's 10 years away. Then the pendulum goes over here, sell this boat, just bugger off abroad. And then the pendulum is Stratford on Avon. One thing I do know is I will I would not like to retire at Mercy Marina. That's nothing against Mercia. There's not enough going on for me. Stratford upon Avon Marina, because of where it is, I love Stratford, I love the Cotswolds. That would be a complete different ball game for me. I could get genuinely excited about living in that part of the country. I really could. But that's where I am. And then it could all change again. Yeah. Absolutely. It could all change again in terms of let's just not buy a boat, let's not go abroad and let's just go and buy a little cottage in the middle of nowhere or wherever in, in England or Wales or Scotland, wherever. Don't know. But right now, not even on the landscape. Not even thinking about it. Other than never changed my mind about, and I'm not knocking the marina. It's just not for me. You love it here, don't you? Oh, I, you are retired. I am retired. And funnily enough, I'm going to be doing some sourdough making um, in a few weeks' time. Um, and I love the bingo. And I love, I love the quiz night. I love being part of the trugging group and doing my plants and stuff. I love it. I absolutely I, love it. And I love, genuinely, I love knowing for the next five to ten years that Mrs B is happy in her day. Because that means a lot to me. But... And Mrs B knows when it does finally happen, we've got one hell of a decision to make because the greatest respect, it's got to be right for both of us. All and three of us. All three of us, or four of us. And, you know, if someone said to me right now, you're going to end up living at Mercy Marine, friend, you're like, I, I would never, never retire. I'd have to get off this boat every day and, and go and do some corporate work or something. Anyway, that sounds as though, as I say, I've knocked the marina. I don't mean it. No, um, it it. I love it. I love it here, but I love it because I... I, I it goes I, to work. <laughs> it's not here all the time. Um, anyway, so that's a really nice, positive way to end the, this uh, monthly <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Brian and Bev, thanks for putting me on a real downer for the rest of Sunday too. afternoon. No, seriously. Folks, thank you. Um, we've said before, the only work... This only works, sorry, with your kind of mm. questions. So Ask us any questions. Ask us anything. Anything. And as, as you've seen from this particular podcast we don't duck it no, do we no we'll, we'll we answer really you honestly, honestly so thank you um, next week hopefully um, will be our weekly vlog <gasps> yes. fingers crossed yes. right I'm going to stand up and press stop and um, see you all really soon yes. bye bye Mr, uh, Mr. Oh. B <laughs> did you call me Mrs B no uh, uh, Kenneth is underneath and he keeps going mop mop you can't <laughs> hear it but he's mop mopping say goodbye bye